Hello, everyone. This is Craig Shoemaker. And this and is Aaron Co- Murphy. Well, not yet. <laughs> Let me introduce you. Oh. She, my first guest on this new studio and this new format and everything else. And I'm already regretting it. And I will tell you why when we get to it. It's called Still Standing Up. I am Craig Shoemaker. I still do things like kind of old school, like I've been on a radio show. I've been on, a, I used to have my own radio show, had my own television shows, and now here I am in a podcast, and it's different. I, I'll say tune in. I do all of the old school stuff. We'll be back after this when there is no back after this. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. A lot of this show is about the turnaround, the turnaround in life. We have guests, some celebrities, some uh, just people that are going to talk about how they turn their life around. And we have a great guest who does qualify in the celebrity category. I watched her growing up. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's a little, I, 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 it's a little creepy. I watched her growing up. Welcome, Aaron. I'm doing it like television again. Aaron Murphy. I'm so happy. That, no, I'm supposed to look at you over here. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'm his first guest. You're, this is the virgin voyage. This is the last, this is the first time we're virgin in a very long time. Speak for yourself. No, I'm going to speak for both of us. We talked about, but she says, why is it in my resume how many times I've been married? Because I've also been married a number of times, so we share that in common. We share a lot in common, which is great. Now, first of all, I want to start with something that we're going to do on our show, is what's your stress level from 1 to 10 right now? Now, 10 is like, oh, my God, I, I got to get out of here. And number four, well, no, 10 is like really, really stressed. And one is like you're in complete bliss. What's your stress level right now? Mine is one. I have absolutely zero stress right now. It's your show, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we have nowhere to go. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Well, a lot of what I, I teach and coach is about re- reducing that stress and doing so through laughter. And you particularly has brought a lot of laughter to people, including my family. My kids watch Bewitched, mm-hmm. the old school Bewitched, and they can't believe that they know you too. You were so sweet to them. They're great kids. Yeah, they, 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 they're really nice kids, but I love that they like the old school stuff when they're watching people smoking on television. Can you even imagine? There's so many things where you go, can you imagine that happening today? That's one of them. There was smoking going on, a lot of drinking, too, on those episodes. It was one of those shows. Darren would come home from work, and he would get a cocktail. So yeah. <laughs> I grew up thinking that's how you live your life. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it turns out none of, it, none of it's true. No sitcom is true in real life, but I guess that's part of the fantasy. Yeah. Uh, we, we, you, you create I'm making you work for this, Craig. You, well, <laughs> You already made me work earlier by telling me how bad I look. No, no, no. You said yourself how bad you look, and I was just being agreeable. No, don't be agreeable on something like that. You're supposed to say, no, Craig, you look fantastic. Let's do it. Okay. So <laughs> you're in the other room looking at a monitor going, you're right, Craig. You look awful. Awful. <laughs> Th- thank you so much. Well, we do have a relationship outside of this. Not in that way, but we do have a relationship mostly because we fish together. Yeah. Now, talk about relaxing. That is a very relaxing experience, except for the tension that I feel in trying to win the award for the best fish. Which I win almost every time. Yes. yes. So she goes out. It's a number of guys mm-hmm. that are in this. Uh, so it's usually kind of a guy sport. And then you show up and everybody's going, oh, let's go help her out. And you're like, get out of my way. There and is you're... no such thing as a guy sport, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> it's traditionally known as a guy sport. I've never seen. Have you... Oh, here's one. Have you ever seen a fishing show that's hosted by a female? Um, to be perfectly candid, I've never seen a fishing show. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what about Dan Hernandez? We've, we've fished with he's him. He's a great friend, and he's, he's fun to fish with, but I've never seen his show. Oh, Sorry, you know, Dan. oh okay. Well, <laughs> traditionally, it is a male sport, but you get out there, and you're like, get away from me. I don't need you You know, to help me with my rod. Yeah, that didn't I sound think, right. I, no, it didn't sound right at all. I, it's fishing. It's fun. I, and actually, when I did um, Craig's last show, he said, hey, we go out a couple times a year, group of friends, a lot of stand-up comics, yeah. and we go deep sea fishing. I said, I would love to go. I love fishing. So we've been and, doing it for a long time now. And now you're in our core group. That's right. It's a group of like six, and I'm one of the guys. You so. are You are one of the guys, and, and we are we're, we kind of get upset in some ways that she pulls in the biggest fish. They do the weigh-in, and then she just sits there making mm-hmm. six $700 a pop because we all put in on the pot. Mm-hmm. So a lot of us, if you don't know who this is, she played Tabitha on Bewitched. <laughs> Longest and, intro ever. <laughs> and tap it. Well, they can look it up. It's not like the old school uh, television shows. They can look it up. They see who they're seeing. But anyway, so you played Tabitha, and Tabitha did this thing of magic where you would, you want to do it for us right now? No. no come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's like my friend Dennis. He won't do the, oh, you're in good hands with Allstate. 
Oh, he was on our last trip too. Yeah. But anyway, I, 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 you used to do something with your nose that would have magic happen. Your, your mother on the show, Elizabeth Montgomery, Sam, she would twitch her nose on her own, but you used your hand. Did they ask you to do the twitch? Did they ask you to do it with no hands? No, they. I, mean, I started on the show before I was two, so they always came up that I was a little witch, so I wouldn't be able to do it. That I would use my finger, so that's what I did. Oh, that's hilarious! We we insist that that's what you're doing to bring in the bigger fish. <laughs> it's got to be lucky. something. It's got to be <laughs> something besides luck, because every time you you're winning these these awards, but uh, our show is a lot about the turnaround in life, and. Many of us have had to, we're, we're forced to have a turnaround. I think it happens with everyone in life. It's everyone in life, we have to have, we have some obstacles, something that's um, preventing us from true happiness, from true bliss, although you're in true bliss right now, which is great. But, but, that, that's, but it's not always that way. What would you say is one of the most difficult things you've had to face in your life? Oh, you, wow. Um, I think life is all about challenges and, yeah. and I could say divorce, I could say, you know, when kids have been sick and in the hospital, um, just a lot of different things. I mean, I've, I've faced the same adversities as everybody else, yeah. financial things when I was younger. And, you know, it's kind of, I, I like to face a problem head on. So I'm kind of a problem solver. I don't ever dwell in the situation. I figure out what the problem is, wow. how to get past it, and then different ways to navigate through it. I love that. And that's exactly what this show is about. Cool. I'm yeah. going to take over. This will be now my show. <laughs> hey, hey, go ahead. <laughs> By all means, take over. So pick one of these things that's happened in your life. I love that that's the way you approach life. I do as well. That's why we have this show. It's a solution-oriented solution podcast, which gives people an idea of what maybe they're facing something that's similar to you that, that they can relate to. So that relatability is what we're about is, give us an example of something you're going along in life and things are just you know pretty good or really great, and then bam, you're faced with what happened in your life that you were, were like, whoa, I really have to manage through this. Gosh, um, you I, said you didn't want the questions ahead of time. I, I don't like questions ahead of time. A lot of times, you guys, if you don't know this, a lot of times when you do a podcast or a TV show or a radio yeah. interview, they will give you questions in advance and you have answers that you're going to say and you talk about it with the producer. I don't like doing that. I Good. like I like authentic conversations where yeah. you're asking me a question, I'm answering the conversation, yeah. the question, and that's how people talk. But so apparently I, I stumped you on this one. No, you did, you did not. <laughs> no, because there are a lot, and I'm thinking of different yeah. times in my life. I am going to come up with something that's completely current. It's, okay, it's great. It's the situation right now, um, and it's not even my problem, but as a parent, I take on my kids' problems. Yeah. And um, – one of my sons is going through a divorce right now. So that is the problem that I will talk about. Oh, great. Yeah. You know, you're right. It is all about the now. But as, as a matter of fact, that's what my wristwatch says. It just says now. Oh, it does. <laughs> oh, I thought it said wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because it's looking at you. Yeah. You go this way. Mom. It's just now. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm glad you're bringing up the now because that is all we have right now. We can learn from the past, which is great. You talk about the past as long as we're learning from it. I, I have a uh, saying that ego is e ego is stands for evading growth opportunity, and many people we do evade that growth opportunity by taking other routes, by running away, by ignoring or or blocking or whatever it is that we do. There's so many, and I love that you have these methods that you're going to share with us right now. Sure. And dealing, so your son calls you or has been calling you. He says, "Listen, I'm going through some difficult times." How do you help them through that? How do you, how does yeah, it, it's, you it's breaking any problem. I'm, I'm, I'll talk about that situation, but, but making it more general for everybody, you look at the big problem, then you kind of break it into chunks. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step would be filing for divorce. The next step would be figuring out where you're going to live, what you, know, what you can do for a living, how you help the kids get through it. If you look at it as one huge problem, it can be overwhelming. If you can break a big problem down into manageable steps, it's easier to get through. That's interesting. That's a really great way to look at it because some things do seem so overwhelming and people have other methods to deal with the overwhelm, and that is avoidance or drinking, using drugs, whatever it is. They'll do anything except for let's dive into this thing and be courageous and curious of these other methods that we can explore. So what's a, what's a method that you would explore with him and suggest to him in dealing with just um, 
did you, for instance, when things weren't going, were going south with he and his now, and it's your daughter-in-law. Yes. Things are starting to go south, and he's sharing these things with you. Which which take do you have? Do you have a take of oh, you're going to play the role of her? You're going to play the role of a mediator? I mean, what kind of things happen when he brings these things to you? I, I would say to start with, I was definitely a mediator where I was an impartial person to hear both of their concerns and kind of talk them through it. Mm -hmm. And, at, you know, earlier in the year it was, um, okay, we're going through these issues. Uh, what should we do? Should we get divorced? And I have to say, as someone looking in, that's your decision to make. What steps could you both make to make the marriage better? Is it going to therapy? Is it, you know, finding outside interests so you're both doing something that's rewarding and kind of talking them through that? When it became clear that um, staying together was not the best mm. alternative, then it's like, okay, well, now we're in the process of, okay, the marriage is over. How do we move forward and make sure that the kids know they're loved by both parents, that it mm. doesn't have to be such an adversarial thing. So yeah. that's where we are. <gasps> so staying away from the adversarial thing and, you know, a lot of it has to do with acceptance. I think that that's a big, big situation that most of us need to hear that is get into a, a space of radical acceptance. Like you accept, I mean, obviously there's some unacceptable things like a crime is kind of unacceptable. <laughs> so violence is unacceptable, but there's some things that we really can accept. Have you ever suggested that to uh, your son and, yeah. and, and your daughter-in-law? I think, I think the end of marriage is like a death. And they say that there are the steps that you go through with yeah. grief where you come out on the other side and it's acceptance. So it's kind of getting through those things and moving on. And I am a big believer in not always looking back on the past. And I have a very strong ability to compartmentalize because everyone's life is complicated. You don't have just one thing going on. So whatever the problem is you're dealing with, that's only a small part of your life. You still need to function and get through the rest of your life. So yeah. it's, okay, you can deal with this, this issue that's stressful or causing you, causing you grief or, or whatever, and you address it, but then you also have to be able to kind of like put it aside in a drawer so you can go on and function with the rest of your life. And where does sense of humor come into this? I mean- Sense of humor is- Huge. Yeah. You know that. I, this is something I've told um, all of my kids since they were little. You don't have any control about how other people act. Like you can't control a, a person who's driving who has a bad attitude. You have no, you can't control a boss who might be mad at you, but you have total control over how you react. So you can always choose to laugh. So I always say in almost every situation, you could either laugh or cry. And I choose to laugh. So it's it, humor is a way to get through everything. And there are times where I remember when I went through a divorce, going by myself to the movie theater and watching a funny movie. And yeah. I, something about being in a, a big group and everyone's laughing and, and you with your comedy, it's a way to get through it. I mean, life has to be a balance of everything, but it has to have a lot of laughter. More laughs than tears. Oh, I, I agree with you. and Or laugh till you have tears. Yeah. That's yeah. always a great thing, too, because the tears are released and they're very cleansing. Well, speaking of that, I do something called, I don't think you've ever done this with me. I, I hope not. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you will hope that you did do, do, do it often. It's called Chuckle Chatter, where oh. you don't have to go to a movie. You don't have to pay for a movie. You don't have to go anywhere. You can stay right where you are, and we can do it right now. Okay. Watch how it works. So you basically... I'll do the simple version. There's guided lavitation. That's where it gets a little deeper. But we'll just do chuckle chatter. It's very simple. Okay. And what it does is it shifts your consciousness into the meaninglessness of life because we put so much meaning onto everything. It's, it has to be this way because we've been instructed that way. It must go this way. It must go this way. And it's a lot about control. When we're really, as you said, you're not in control of your boss or the person on the freeway who's honking at you making a wrong turn. You're not in control of it. But you do have control of your own emotions. So this is a way to get into those emotions and release. Okay, here's, here's what it is. You, you uh, first of all, follow me. Okay. Breathe in through your nose and let out a ha. And understand the word ha is very cleansing. Do you know if you've ever, ever been to church? Yes. Well, they have hallelujah. Ha ha, hallelujah. There's a re reason for that because it's a release. Ha. So ready? Okay. Breathe in through your nose and do it with me. Here you Ha. Notice that <laughs> smile that comes across your face. You're releasing healing enzymes when you smile. You're bringing that energy to the world. And that can shift other people's consciousness as well because laughter is contagious. Okay, here we go. Let's do another ha through your nose. 
Ha! <laughs> good. Oh, you're good at this. And you're already giggling. You're already giggling. That's fantastic. So this is what I encourage the audience. Do it along with us is we laugh together and watch what happens. You shift everything. All that energy goes into a positive state of consciousness, okay? So I love that you giggled at the end. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go ha and then start giggling at the end. Ready? Okay. Ha! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> exactly. Now, a part of our minds that we go to is, oh my God, this is silly. This is stupid. This is that, that we've been trained to think that wipe that smile off your face. What are you laughing at? And so forth. But in the meantime, you're just taking care of yourself. That's their problem with their conditioning. I'm taking care of my conditioning here by laughing through it. Okay. This time let's take it. I'll, I'll take it a little more advanced. Now this time, I'm just going to talk about what happened today while I'm, uh, while I'm laughing and you laugh along with me. So you keep the energy going. Ready? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I keep going. I hardly slept last night. <laughs> My daughter has an earache. <laughs> I'm putting drops into her ears at two in the morning. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and she kept me up all night. And I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> And now I look terrible. <laughs> Affirmed by my guest from the other room saying you do look horrible. <laughs> ah, now deep breath in. Ah, I feel better. Right? I already felt great, but I feel a little better. Yeah, exactly. Now you're down to a zero. Yeah. So now I want you to do that. Express out loud just what you did today. Just a real simple, woke up, real brush your teeth, whatever it is, just keep it simple. And have it, it's chuckle chattering. You're just chattering along with me, and we're making each other smile. Okay, ready? Here, <laughs> through your nose. Uh, <laughs> what'd you I do? I woke up early like always. <laughs> Walk the dogs. <laughs> Had some coffee. Oh, coffee. <laughs> and then drove here. <laughs> Until Craig, he looked awful. <laughs> <laughs> ah, through your nose. I feel better. <laughs> yeah, there you go. She feels better when she tells me someone how bad they look. You asked. <laughs> I know. I did not. I only asked once. It didn't have to keep going. <laughs> so, anyway, it doesn't matter. That's what this does. It puts you in a, a state where it doesn't matter. It's meaningless. Like we put so much meaning, I put so much meaning how I look and everything else as if people are going to tune out. Oh my God, look at the bags under his eyes because he didn't sleep last night. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is the content of our character, of who we are and what we bring to the world and our energy. And that brings a po positive energy to the world. And I know you agree with me. I do agree with you. <laughs> I know. So the one thing that you do that I have noticed, my observation, my reflection back to you as you reflected back to me, the bags under my eyes, what you, I reflect back to you is it's so wonderful and beautiful. You might have heard this before, that a lot of times when I open up my social media, there is you. And it's not only you, it's you in a car usually. <laughs> It's pretty seat much belt a, selfies. Is that what they are? Seat, I never, what I, call them. I didn't know they were called that. I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> you do these seat back, seat back, these seat belt selfies. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful way to, sh it shifts me because I'm reflecting back to you what you're putting out. And if we put that out to the world, that's the turnaround is we have a choice to do our own seatbelt selfies or whatever it is, chuckle chatter for me, whatever it is, we have that choice. And that's the choice that you make. Now, I must say, it's starting <laughs> to get a little comical, as if you took the same photo from 10 years ago and just put it it, it put it up there. It is it's the same photo every time. It's an absolute inside joke. I know you and I have talked about it. I like to do things well. So when I decided that I was going to be on social media, I went to college. I took a class at UCLA and a class at Loyola about social media. And it's about finding your audience, looking at um, the analytics of Twitter and Facebook and Instagram to see what people are liking, which posts they engage with the most. And I tried to figure it out to figure out the algorithm showing photos of just me, photos from Bewitched, photos with my family, photos with friends and with you know famous actors to see what would get the best response. 
am by far, by far, by 10 times sometimes, seatbelt selfies, which I started just to check my makeup at going to events. I yeah. take a selfie and I posted one and it got thousands more likes than other photos. So by analytics, I found that if I post a seatbelt selfie and then you can scroll to see another photo, what I'm doing with kids or grandkids, the events I'm going to, the work I'm talking about, then it gets viewed significantly more than if I just post the photo that is the second photo. So there's actually a, a like business to the madness. And Instagram will show you your top nine photos of the year. Yeah. And I joked about it. Um, They're all the same. Recently. It's, it's <laughs> nine. The top nine were me. And then I, I, the second photo is the photo that I was my favorite photo of the year, which was me with two of my grandkids. And I thought this just shows that that um, you give people what they want on social media. Yeah. Not that I would necessarily think that everyone wants to see my face, but they seem to. Well, like I just it. reflected back to you that I love seeing your face. Well, that's a perfect place for us to put a pause in this because we're going to, I want to say, we'll be right back. But that's the end of this podcast. But we have another one. We're going to tease that. You on our next one, which is happening minutes from now which we've seen days from now <laughs> and heard days from now, whatever it is, or it can be heard years from now. It doesn't matter. We're going to tease it. You are going to share with us what you learned in your course so that we don't have to pay for it. <laughs> so okay. There you go, folks. Aaron, you're awesome. I love to see your seatbelt selfies and I love that you're right next to me right now, sharing your, your experiences that make life better. Okay. And we'll be seeing you. It, I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> How do I say we'll be back at this? We'll see you the next time. We're going to hear from Erin the next time on how what she learned in her social media class. We'll see you then. See you soon. Like in a minute. <laughs> <laughs>